Hi everyone and welcome back to the Paperless Movement YouTube channel. I'm Tom Solid and I help you to level up your digital life. And today we have another interview with Chris Lawley. He runs a very successful YouTube channel and he is the expert when it comes to using the iPad as your only device for work and life and all. He really only uses an iPad. And we will discuss in this interview to what extent this is really possible and how he actually uses shortcuts to increase his efficiency big time. This is really interesting for you guys if you're using iPad Pro, but also how he does video editing on the iPad and many other things when it comes to productivity. We will go end to end through the ICO framework. If you're an Inner Circle member, you know what I'm talking about, about input, control, output, refine the different parts of a productivity system. We will talk through this with Chris Lawley, what he uses for note-taking, knowledge management, task management, and so on. This is really exciting stuff, so I can't wait to get started. So let's roll it. All right, everyone, I can't wait to dive into this talk with Chris Lawley. I hope I pronounce it properly. And uh, perfect. <laughs> as I said in the beginning, he has his own YouTube channel with uh, called Untitled Side. Actually, it's under just under my name now. I, I changed the branding of everything. I dropped the Untitled Side because I realized it was really confusing to people. So everything's just under my name now. Ah, oh, all right. So I missed that part, but I think that's uh, a common okay. thing I to do, isn't it? I just did it really recently, so no, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, I was always also uh, struggling with this. Um, that's why I included both. Tom Solid's paperless movement, so everything is included. <laughs> but yeah, Th that's, that's a common thing to do, to use the, the, the own name. And Chris Lawley, I, I don't know, I think I can keep it better in my mind because before that I was always searching for untitled page or untitled site, so... It's a great thing. So yeah. welcome to the show. Why don't you introduce to the people who don't know you, who you are, what you do, and why are you on this show? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having me on, first of all. Uh, for those that don't know, my name is Christopher Lawley. I'm a YouTuber. Uh, I'm also a network admin for an insurance company in the United States. Um, but Uh, mostly, I have a YouTube channel that focuses around doing work on the iPad. I work completely off the iPad, no Mac, no PC, none of that stuff. Uh, my main computer is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro. I edit all my videos from it, uh, edit photos. Uh, when I had a podcast, I even edited the podcast from it. I'm my workflow is completely 100% off the iPad, and that's kind of what my channel focuses on. And that's why I want to have you on this show because, uh, I'm a pretty heavy iPad Pro user and my channel was all about the iPad Pro, but now I just want to show my complete workflows and my productivity setup and so on. And my productivity setup is certainly not using 100% the iPad Pro. So I'm really interested to dive deeper into this. But you're also very known for your shortcuts experience. I mean, you're really the expert there. And if you want to check this out, go to Chris Lawley's, uh, Chris Lawley's YouTube, YouTube channel, where you will certainly find some very detailed videos about how to set up shortcuts. Why and how did you, you know, discover them and dive into this and... Are you just a nerd like me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am just a nerd. Um, so one of the big things about shortcuts is you got to know that it wasn't always shortcuts. It was actually a third-party app uh, years ago called Workflow. Uh, and Workflow got acquired by Apple, and then that got turned into shortcuts and integrated into Siri and a whole bunch of other things. Yeah. Um, but I'm an automation nerd. I love, uh, I love writing code. I love automating things. Uh, and since the iPad is my favorite computer, Shortcuts is the automation that's kind of built into it, like how there's Apple Script and Automator on the Mac, and on Windows there's PowerShell and other things. Mm -hmm. um, so Shortcuts is the the system wide automation for iOS and iPad OS, and and that's been something that's um, really core to how I work from from the iPad. I honestly don't think. If shortcuts and before workflow wasn't around, I don't think I could go all in on the iPad. I, I probably could, um, but it wouldn't be nearly as easy and nearly as seamless as it is. 
uh, with using something like shortcuts. Um, and uh, just a quick description for those that don't know what shortcuts is, it's, it uses building block code. So you're not there sitting there typing out if statements and needing to know what a Boolean is or anything like that. There's blocks and you put the blocks in order. You start at the top and you work your way down and that's your script. That's, that's your automation utility. They can be as simple as one action or they can be as complex. I've seen some with over a thousand actions. Oh, wow. So it really just kind of depends on how you want to do it. Well, that, that's really great. And um, I have some shortcuts as well, but when I see what you build up there, that's already very complex. And uh, I love just how you leverage the iPad the right way, I would say. And that brings me into the thing that I can believe you can be productive with the iPad. And good that you pointed it out because I also think it might lack a lot of features that But it's, it, isn't it a shame that we have to build it with shortcuts, on the other hand, to make it productive? Mm, I, I would slightly disagree. So me building my shortcuts, it allows me to make a custom workflow. Yeah, I could use an app to um, update my website or something like that. In fact, um, that's actually a perfect example. So I have a website uh, that is still under the Untitled site. Uh, And basically, anytime I post a video or anything like that, I have a shortcut that will automatically pull from my YouTube channel's RSS feed, get all the details like the title, the link to the video, even the description using things like regex to pull the description from that, that RSS feed, and then I'll just post it as a new blog post on my website. I could sit there manually copy and paste all that stuff in and put that into an app and upload that, but the shortcut runs It, it, I don't even think it takes five seconds to run. It's it just automatically runs and it runs in the background. So automating is more about um, doing things that re repetitive tasks that you do a lot. Automating is about making those cleaner and simpler and making them work consistently every single time. So I know when I run the shortcut to post a new video to my website, it's going to look the same like it did all the other times because I've automated it and I built it that way. I, you know, if, if I was manually doing something, I could forget to put a link to something in there or I could copy something wrong. There, there's a whole lot of user error that could happen in that process. But this way, I know it consistently happens the right way every single time. You know, I love when I hear this. I hope my, my followers will love this as well. I'm sure about that because I'm also all about automation and that's really a great way to increase efficiency and ultimately mm -hmm. productivity then. And, um, you know, on Twitter, I think I posted as well, if you have recurring tasks, automate them. If you can't, if you didn't automate them, create a single task to make an automation out of this. You yeah. Know, so that's, that's really... You know, that's that's really what I love to hear. And this is obviously the masterclass you are doing there. Um, I certainly have to look into this RSS feed thing with, with YouTube. That's That sounds really useful, actually. Yeah. And especially that when you create these shortcuts, we can use this on the iPhone as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I will run. So th that shortcut that I was just talking about, posting something to my YouTube channel. Typically, I post my videos at about 6 a.m. my time. Mm. Um, and that's usually when I'm running out the door to I have to go into my office still right now. I know we're in the middle of COVID and all that stuff. But uh, my job, I, I physically have to be there, unfortunately, to take care of it. And it's insurance, which is actually kind of important right now for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have to still be there. So usually I'll post a video at 6 a.m. and I'm running out the door. So usually by the time I pull up to my office, The, the RSS feed on YouTube takes about 15 minutes to refresh. So it's usually refreshed by then. I'm still sitting in my car. I'll hit the shortcuts button on my phone. And by the time I get into my office, it's all posted. It's all on my website. It's all good to go. Uh, that's really great. So um, for those people who get, just get started and didn't watch your videos yet, certainly that's the thing that should they should do. Um, Where do you find all these information? You know, that's not, you know, that's very specific already. You're talking about RSS feed from YouTube. Yeah. How did you figure that out? So I, I would say starting at the beginning, there's a, just open the shortcuts app. Um, 
if you're running iOS 14, which I recommend you do, there's a new starter shortcut section where it'll give you kind of a few recommended shortcuts that you can kind of take a look. You can see how they work or you can just run them. Um, but there's also the gallery. And my, my pal, uh, Matthew Casanelli, he actually put together most of the gallery when the app was still the workflow app. So he, he did oh. a really great job a long time ago. I think Apple's put some new stuff in there as well. Um, but I think a lot of it is still that core workflow stuff. Um, so there is a gallery section in the shortcuts app that you should just go to browse through, find something that's interesting to you, and then try editing it, make it work more specific to your needs. So maybe it's something that adds like a grocery list to reminders, but you don't use the reminders app. You use the app OmniFocus or things mm. swap out the reminders action for the things action or OmniFocus action. Oh, that's actually a good, a uh, great tip. there, just replacing those apps. But when it comes to apps, um, they need to provide the integration, isn't it? It's not like that all of the apps on the iPad are out of the box compatible with the shortcuts. Cuts. Yeah, uh, correct. So not not every app and different shortcuts actions can do different things. So when shortcuts was first announced, we had something called Siri shortcuts, where were basically very simple one block actions that you can't really do anything with. Um, but last year in iOS 13, Apple updated shortcuts so that now th third parties can provide what's called parameters. Mm. And you could put variables in these parameters. So you can constantly kind of change up the input. I think the best example that I could think of um, off the top of my head is I use the app drafts for a lot of just quick note taking and stuff like that. So I have a single action shortcut that just uses the new draft action. And for the, the draft area, the text area, I just have ask for input put in there. So there, there's a, when you get into the shortcuts app, there is a um, variable that is down at the bottom toolbar there that you can just hit that's ask for input. So basically, anytime you run that shortcut and it hits that ask for input variable, it's going to bring up a prompt with a keyboard. and You can just type right into it. So I'll type a quick note and it'll save it right into the drafts app. That's actually one of the shortcuts I use with the new tap back feature in iOS 14 on the iPhones. Mm -hmm. So like you can double tap the back, double tap the back of your phones and run a shortcut. And that's the one I use there. Oh, that's no, oh, that, <laughs> yeah, I have to set up this as well. So drafts is really something I'm using as well. Um, also I'm all over a single source of truth. Um, but draft is really the only thing drafts is only the only thing, um, when it comes to offline usage and when I'm, you know, going for a walk or whatever, and there's no connection, then draft is really handy. The important thing is to process it further. So how do you yeah. use drafts? Is it your single source of truth or what do you use else? Now we come to your productivity system. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, drafts is basically, if I have like an idea or something that I just need to get out of my head and put it someplace so I don't forget about it, that's where it goes. It goes into drafts. I also use drafts to write out all the scripts for my videos, shot list, things like that go into drafts. But I've also been using an app. Uh, it just got released last week called Craft. Oh, yeah, I, I heard, heard about that. this. And then that's really okay. a great app. I was surprised how well yeah, this is made. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I've been on the beta for it over the summer, and mm. it's really nice. So what I've started doing is I used to use drafts to store all my note-taking forever, but it really wasn't built for that. It was yeah. really built for, like, quick snippets or temporary notes. It wasn't ever meant for long-form note-taking or long-term note-taking. So basically, anything that I want to keep around for a long period of time, that goes into craft. It gets filed away. It gets, it's it's put into a separate folder. I really need to make a video on this. I just haven't had time yet. Yeah. Um, but I need to... So any long-term thing goes into craft. Any short-term thing, like a script, because usually a script for a video, I, I don't keep around for more than a week because usually by the yeah. end of a week, I'm done with the video. But uh, script, shot list, temporary short notes and stuff like that, that all goes into uh, drafts. All right. So let's get back to shortcuts because this gets interesting now, I guess, because craft is really focused on iPad uh, compatibility no. <laughs> it's really focused on work well on the ipad <laughs> mm -hmm. um i think when you have the draft thing and you share something when you share information you also can use shortcuts there isn't it by sharing yes. so you could leverage this now in combination with 
craft? Yeah, so I have a shortcut and then an action in draft. So basically the shortcut will take any text and create a new note and craft for it. Hmm. Um, so I can run this right from drafts using the drafts action uh, list. And so in drafts, you can have the action list and in those actions, you can program it to do specific things. One of those specific things you could do is run a shortcut. So it just runs that uh, new craft craft uh, note shortcut. So try saying that five times fast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. um, the uh, so that way it will create a whole craft note for that. And then I could delete it in drafts if that's something that I want to keep around for a long period of time. Yeah, so we covered now, uh, I mean, my inner circle members, they know about the i framework I'm talking about. It's about input, control, output, refine. So we covered here input for drafts and uh, control, which is the knowledge management system you're using, crafts. So is there anything else you're using for input or for, you know, knowledge management or is this already set there? That's that's pretty much it. I do have an Airtable database for mm -hmm. things that just work better for Airtable. So I keep ideas for videos in there. Um, and the reason why I keep that in Airtable is I have a Zapier. Uh, yeah. They call them a Zap, but a Zapier automation yeah. that watches that database. And anytime I mark one of those video ideas as I'm currently working on, it will then create a project and things and then create, which things is my task manager. That's that's the task manager I use. It creates a project and things. will fill out that project with all the steps I do. So from taking notes to posting the video and, and releasing it, uh, all those steps in between, it creates all those in that project. And then also in Timery, which I use for time tracking, um, it'll create a project for that video in Timery as well. I'm sorry, Toggle, it'll create oh, a time. project for that in Toggle. Timery is the app I use to control Toggle because the Toggle app on iOS isn't very good. <laughs> okay. It's very confusing. <laughs> yeah, I know, I, I know. know. I know exactly it's what you're lot. talking about. It's all about trial and error there. And we yeah. all have to, you know, just get started with our productivity system and then adjust that's the refined part by the way so yeah Airtable is really interesting so Airtable is also uh, integrated with shortcuts i thought i tried it once but it wasn't there did it change uh it no it's not i it's, ah, okay. i'm using it with zapier yeah so I, zapier I know is like an online thought. uh automation tool yeah. now there is a i don't this might be in beta so i may not be allowed to talk about it i can't remember off the top of my head but there is an app let me let me check yeah, really quick. Yeah, check. It, it does okay. It does not have the orange bubble next to it. Okay, uh, <laughs> Shortcutify is an app that's basically um, creating shortcut actions for apps that don't have shortcut support. So Airtable is one of them. Uh, Google Maps is one. Uh, like the LifeX light bulbs and stuff are mm. also there. So these will this app will create shortcuts actions. For, for apps that don't provide shortcuts. And you just need to put in like your API key or, or log in with the, the credentials for that app or whatever. Oh, well, that's really interesting. So how is it called? Shortcutify or? Yeah, Shortcutify. All right. Okay, I think I have to note this. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a really good app. Uh, if you use, I, I have it right here. It has Spotify, LifeX, Airtable, Google Maps, Todoist, Coinbase. Uh, it does something with the Mac. I don't have a Mac and I don't know what it is and Google drive support. So it's got a lot of different app support for apps that don't natively support shortcuts. Well, that's really, that's really great. So I just had a uh, Plexi on my show in the last episode and we talked about, you know, they also are the middleman between the different apps. So that's great to see. We have another opportunity there. So thanks for sharing. Um, but now let's talk about general productivity on the iPad. So I heard that you're using Things 3, which makes total sense because I also think that's a really great um, productivity or to do or project manager even uh, on the iPad. If you're in the Apple system, I'm using Todoist because I'm all over the place when it comes to devices. Yeah. Uh, so I want to have to access everywhere. So, and we talked already about uh, the refined part, which is automation. So we started out with this. So that's, really sounds theoretically uh, a great setup. However, to be honest, when I'm on the iPad and I just sold my Magic Keyboard uh, again, once again, I bought it twice because I really, you know, 
been motivated, got it again, and thought, okay, now you're using your iPad Pro, you know, to be on the go and be efficient and things like this and write down things when it comes to your mind. But I ended up not using it because the touchpad is too small for my for my fingers. I don't know why. And well, I'm using a 15-inch MacBook Pro, so there's a different size of <laughs> touchpad there. And also the keys, you know, I'm really a heavy writer there. So I rather use the Logitech MX keys and the Mac MX Master. I think you're using them as well, isn't it? So when you have your desktop set up. But let's, you know, two questions there. You are using the Magic <laughs> Keyboard as well, and you love it, as I see it uh, on your videos. And how do you, you know, leverage it on your desktop then with the other accessories? So right now, my my whole desk setup here in my office is completely in flux. Like, there, my main desk is right over here. That or right over here, you can't see where I'm pointing. Uh, that's typically Especially where not I do on the all podcast. my editing and writing and things like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Oh, well. Uh, but uh, there's nothing over there on my desk right now. I'm kind of in the middle of a whole flux situation. I just ordered a few things for video and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that's besides the point. That wasn't what you were asking about. Um, but the Magic Keyboard, I'm absolutely in love with. Yeah. I will agree that the, the touchpad, the, the trackpad is a little small. I, I would love to see it bigger. I'm not sure how they would make it bigger, just like yeah, sure. looking at the size yeah. of everything. Um but I got used to it. It did take me a little while to get used to it, but now I'm, I'm used to it. it. I think going back to my review of it, it was the thing I was worried about the most. Um, but I'm fine with it now. It, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, but when I am sitting at my desk, I typically use a mechanical keyboard. Uh, I've been a big fan lately of the Keychron mechanical keyboards. Mm -hmm. I just got the Keychron K8, uh, mechanical keyboard with the blue switches. And then I also use an Apple magic trackpad. Uh, mm -hmm. and I like that Mac, uh, the, the trackpad, with the iPad, I like a lot more than using a mouse because it, it just feels like it has better support for trackpad over a mouse. Mm -hmm. The mouse, I, I tried using the uh, Logitech MX Master 3, but there was a lot of weird things happening, especially when you did like pull to refresh, when you were like scroll yeah. down and stuff like that. Like the page would get come like halfway down and then get stuck. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know, maybe that was a bug on my end or something. Uh, and I never filed any feedback with Apple. I should have, but I never did. <laughs> um, so I just stopped using that and I've been using the magic trackpad. I, I'm basically all in on the trackpads for my devices and I, and I really like them. I, I, I like the Apple magic keyboard. I like the Apple or the, the magic trackpad too. Man, Apple's naming is not great though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So especially, you know, the magic keyboard, you can, you know, it could be anything now. <laughs> so yeah, you have to say exactly. iPad magic keyboard. Well, that's what yeah, we're talking I, about here. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm purposefully always having to say magic keyboard for iPad and that bugs me. I was like, why couldn't you just give it a different name? <laughs> <laughs> The, the thing that bothers me about this Magic Keyboard as well, and I mentioned it in my review, is that you can't turn it around to have a different angle for drawing. And I mainly yeah. use it for drawing, actually. And I really love the Apple Pencil. And if people following my channel, they know I'm all about these handwriting note-taking apps and so on, because that's really, for me, the most powerful feature when it comes to iPad Pro. On the other hand, I'm sitting here on my ultra wide screen, 49 inch and my uh, MX, uh, uh, MX Master 3 and so on. So. I can't change anymore. You know, I was really yeah. going into this and I have three different browsers open and it is just so much more efficient. So, but I saw that you connected to your um, monitor as well, your iPad. So tell us how this works. So um, I have, it, it's actually like, if you search LG 4K monitor on Amazon, I bought like the cheapest 4K monitor you could possibly buy. Uh, and I, I, took it to my office at work um, because it had terrible color reproduction. I was hoping to use it for video editing and stuff like that. And, and the color reproduction was so bad on it. I just couldn't do it. I actually just ordered um, the LG ultra fine 24 inch 4k one, mm -hmm. the one that Apple secretly made and then gave to for LG and told them, Hey, you guys mass produce this one uh, <laughs> that no one will ever conform confirm or deny but we all know yeah, that's sure. what actually happened <laughs> um so i i actually just bought that it should be here tuesday um so i'm 
I'm looking forward to trying that just because I, I do want that monitor set up. Uh, I'm getting older now. I just turned 30 this year. So I, I, oh need, my God. Uh, I need something a little Poor more. Guy. I, <laughs> hey, I, I got back problems. I'm getting older. Uh, what shall I say? I'm 38 uh, something. <laughs> Not sure. But yeah, I can agree. It, it's just getting worse from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get ahead of the issues right now. So, uh, and I know looking down at the iPad is not great when typing. Uh, you, you mentioned you use the Apple Pencil a lot. I don't. I yeah. really don't use the Apple Pencil a whole lot because I can't draw to save my life and my handwriting's <laughs> terrible. So I, I'm kind of like trying to build this transformer computer with the iPad that. One moment, it's an it's a tablet, it's an iPad. I'm holding it in my hand. Then I can put it in the Magic Keyboard, and it's a laptop. And then the next moment, I can plug it into a monitor, and it's a desktop computer. That's what I'm trying to build um, here. And I and I need Apple to support, like truly support external monitors. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to happen or not. People ask me all the time if if I, I think it's going to happen this year or next year or whatever. I I, I truly don't know. Uh, nobody's told me anything. Yeah, but, so for uh, now, it's just a duplicated screen, isn't it? It's a mirroring screen. Yeah, mirroring. it's mirroring. But And since the iPad is a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, it puts a 4 by 3 image yeah. up on the monitor. So uh, you have black bars mm. on the side. And it's fine. Like, it's usable. It's totally usable. It's just annoying to look at. Especially when you buy a 4K LG <laughs> that you want to leverage. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, I want this to look nice. I And like, you know, we, we both do YouTube videos. Yeah. Like we, you definitely understand like the whole, like you need to have your stuff look nice. So people pay attention to it. Yeah. Like uh, every YouTuber, including myself, I will totally throw myself on this. That's ever done it. Like an office tour or a desk tour or whatever their desk do not look like that all no. the time. I guarantee you. There's usually there's usually a half a dozen SD cards spread across it, a shotgun, microphone, camera. Like they they never usually don't look share like that our all the time. Don't share our secrets yeah. here, you know. I, yeah, I just yeah, would no, need no, to I, move the camera but, just a few inches. <laughs> and exactly. you would see a I whole mean, lot if you there. saw my desk, my, my desk is covered with stuff right now because I was just filming right before uh, I hopped on the call with you. And like it, it's just covered with with stuff right now so um <laughs> it's I all fake it's all fake you know that's but at least the content yeah. or yeah the information is genuine that's the important thing isn't it so. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean it's not like we we you know pull a bunch of stuff out of storage film it and then put it all back in storage <laughs> it just doesn't usually look this clean yeah that, because we're using it and, and i think that's the important piece yeah. is, is we're using yeah. it we're not we're not sitting here and, and being um fake about it or any we didn't rent out an office and be like here's my office yeah. tour no that's not that's not what's happening uh there are some videos out there it. where i think okay you're telling us something just by looking at your setup i'm not really sure if you are really using this stuff so you see exactly. that's exactly that's why i okay the people on the podcast don't see that yet now but that's why I have this new perspective. I'm sitting here now on this ultra wide. It's just so much more efficient to make my videos. Before that, I have my uh, desk there, and I that was exactly the thing. I had to sit there and record and things like this. But why? I'm working here, and I'm telling people what I work and how I work. So why not just record myself at the workplace? Isn't that so? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's a great uh, conversation there. And it's nice to see somebody I can relate to <laughs> when it comes to editing and filming. Yeah. That's really a thing. So I just gave away my BenQ uh, monitor, which is um, also uh, color grade. Um, is it color grading? No, what is it? Color cert certificate that you really get the right srgb colors and so on um yeah. that's really something important i agree with this and um it is nothing worse than editing hours and hours a video and then upload it and watch it on your iphone or something like that and realize okay i should have checked this earlier yeah then you have yeah, only one I, shot isn't it so <laughs> Yep, I've done that. In fact, I released, I won't say which video it is, but I released <laughs> a video, didn't watch it before hitting publish, and the like last 30 seconds of it, the audio is not synced up with the video oh, yeah. at all. Oh, I it's can. totally off, and I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm so embarrassed by it. And a few people have caught it, 
Uh, but I don't think a lot of people caught it, but a few people caught it and said something I, I'm so embarrassed by. And it was way too late for me to pull it. Like, you know how, like, yeah. what, you know that when YouTube, the algorithm yeah. picks up a video and stuff, the algorithm had already picked up the, the pressure is on like, you, yep, especially nope. then you shared it on social media or whatever. And then it's yep. all gone. So, oh yeah, I no, absolutely this is a video that this. has over a hundred thousand views. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's like, interesting. Oh, that's the interesting thing. I think people will understand, you know, there's a lot of pressure on our side as well to get these things out and we try to do our best, but I, you know, you have to just say, okay, I do it better next time. At yep. least, you know, people feel it if it was on, you know, just not being very careful or if it was a mistake and things like that. And when you go to the retention rate, I think <laughs> You can say those people who comment there, they're your biggest fans because they watch your yeah. whole video. So that's that's just a good sign then. So they made you, it to you the just last made an seconds, analytics so. in there to check out who is actually watching your videos until the end. So. Exactly. No, I like the way of thinking about yeah. that. Uh. <laughs> so, but let's stay with video editing. So you're using, uh, it, it was Luma Fusion, isn't it? So, but it's called yes. differently now. It is... Or is it still no, Luma it's Fusion? still Luma Fusion. Right. It's still Luma Fusion. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was really I think surprised. The company behind the it is called Luma Touch. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then they uh, have yeah, like that's the Luma F. Yeah, they have Luma Effects, and like they have a couple of other apps. But like, if you get Luma Fusion, those other apps are in Luma Fusion. Nah. It's very okay. confusing. Yeah. I, the branding is very off on it. But yeah, Luma Fusion is the video editor that I use. And I was really surprised. Obviously, I tested all this as well. And I'm using Adobe Premiere, and uh, <clears throat> there's um, performance-wise, I was really surprised for Luma Fusion. Uh, this, this is unbelievable. It is it is so seamless, and I can absolutely understand when you get into this, and then your all your workflows and so on, and you have a certain way to do this. Um, I can understand that you're using this way. However, again. When it comes to what I really hate, sitting there, reaching out to the screen to touch something and to adjust something, this reaching out gesture, I don't, just don't like. It feels so inefficient in some way. And now we have the mouse support, but is it really as good? Do you think this could be further improved? I mean... Oh, it, yeah. it absolutely could be further improved. Absolutely. Um, but one of the things that I learned, so I learned video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro um, back in like CS1 and CS2 days, like even before there was the Creative Cloud Suite. Um, and, and so I learned a lot of my core fundamentals using that. And a lot of that trans transferred over. And one of the very core things that I was taught was always use keyboard shortcuts, learn the keyboard shortcuts. So basically I have one hand on the keyboard when editing, the other hand on a trackpad, mm. and I can fly through and edit now. Now, when LumaFusion first came out, they didn't have a ton of keyboard shortcuts. In fact, I think they barely had any, uh, and there was no trackpad and stuff. So it was a lot of touching the screen and it was a lot of slow workflow, but uh, I wanted to be the iPad guy on YouTube. I wanted to be the person that had the iPad workflow. If you wanted to do something on the iPad, my channel was the channel you would come to. Like that was my thinking when I started yeah. off. Yeah. So I wanted to be all in on the iPad and Luma Fusion was the only game in town at the time uh, that I could do that with. It, it kind of still is. There's Adobe Rush and stuff like that. I don't, for as long as Adobe Rush has been out now, I think it's pretty, um, it's pretty terrible for what it is. For I'll just I never be honest. used it. It's pretty I never terrible. used it. Yeah. It, it is it's really like so a basic. Cheaper, it's a cheaper version of LumaFusion. It doesn't have anything that LumaFusion uh, doesn't have, but or it doesn't have any, yeah, it doesn't have anything LumaFusion doesn't have. Um, and you have to pay monthly for it. Whereas yeah, LumaFusion yeah. is just, yes. I think it's $30 now. When it first came out, it was 20 and I think they've gone up to 30 now. Um, but it's totally $30 it. one-time payment and you're done. Yeah, that's that's unbelievable. I mean, I can totally understand these subscription models um, because, uh, you know, people complain so much about this, but think about this, how much you paid for Adobe before that. You know, it was already 2,000 euros just for... Or it, yeah, euros just for the Photoshop edition. And usually you paid this per year or something like that. And now people complain about, what is it, the $20 or something for only yeah. Photoshop per month. And all the other subscription things. Um, yeah, we have to 
either I want to have those apps further to be developed or, you know, for some, they have to get money from something. And LumaFusion, we have to point out here that Apple takes away, what is it, 30% or even more yes. from this? 30%? So, yeah. And since it's a paid up front, so subscription apps, and, I, and I'm totally okay with subscription apps. Uh, my issue with Adobe Rush is that it never seems to get updated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It hasn't yeah. really gotten anything new since its additional launch. So that's why I don't like its subscription model. Uh, but so the way Apple's rules work is if it is a paid up front app, so like LumaFusion, $30, $30 right there, Apple gets 30% of that, LumaFusion gets 70% of that. If it's a subscription app, for the first year, the the Apple gets 30%, the app gets 70%, but then it changes after the first year to a 15 and 85 split. Ah, okay. I didn't know that. So yeah, so that, that's interesting. So it's a big benefit for a lot of apps to go subscription model because they make more money over the long term, mm -hmm. even if they don't charge as much up front. But let's get back to the shortcuts. I mean, I don't mean the Siri shortcuts. I'm talking about the keyboard shortcuts that you just mentioned. And that really, I 100% agree, increases efficiency so much. So for me, when I'm sitting in front of my desktop, I'm not using my keyboard at all. I have my stream deck. And on the stream deck, I have all the shortcuts for my Adobe Premiere. Oh. And so I'm using this. And <clears throat> I'm looking, I was looking a long time around for something that allows me to, you know, make my own keyboard only with shortcuts. And there's not, not such thing. There are a lot of things that try this and Stream Deck just works the best because I can so do so many things. Um, but the way the keys feel, I'm not happy about this. But uh, since I do this, Ripple Delete and all these things, my efficiency increased uh, so much editing these videos. So as I said, only my stream deck and my mouse, that's all I use. So I can absolutely relate to this because, you know, now I have to press one button, not two for um, yeah. <laughs> command C and some things like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and that's actually a really smart way of doing it. I I just, I've learned the LumaFusion keyboard shortcuts. Um, at, at, do you know what editor's keys are? Have you ever heard of them? Nope. Editor's keys, they nope. make like those keyboard covers for keyboards that, that oh. do, uh, here, I have one right here. Um, that those they overlays. Make, they make, oh yeah. Yeah. They make these for like the, this is specifically for the Luma fusion keyboard. Um, but basically it's a keyboard cover for the magic keyboard and they have one for the smart keyboard too. So like if you're wanting to learn the keyboard shortcuts for Luma fusion and you don't want to have to constantly hold down the command key on your iPad, um, editors keys, they do, they make these, uh, keyboard covers that you can pick up. I, I don't remember how much they are off the top of my head. Um, but it's really nice. It just overlays on the keyboard kind of, it's this, it has like this plastic feel to it, which is kind of unfortunate, but mm. that's just the way those things work um but it's a great way of learning keyboard shortcuts because i i highly recommend to anyone starting off video editing whatever editor you pick learn the keyboard shortcuts it will speed up your workflow dramatically yeah i absolutely agree i mean you know we germans have our c on a complete different place <laughs> the set oh really yeah it is um next to the t Oh wow, that's far away. So oh, that would that would, that is very <laughs> far away for copy. Yeah, so and that, and it's, it's we have still it, instead we have the Y down there, and now I absolutely oh, under geez. understand the undo. You know, we are used to just reach out the <laughs> this way. Oh but, wow, that that is really big. Yeah. Uh, that's that's like the uh, English keyboards that have the really big return key that throws me off. I'm like, wait, where's backspace <laughs> <laughs> or a uh, backslash? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's that's great conversation so far. So many things uh, I learned as well, and I can understand much more why you're using the iPad Pro. However, um, is it not also really pushing you into this direction that you started a YouTube channel this way and you are the guy who wants to be uh, only living from the iPad Pro? Did you did you never think about going back to a MacBook or MacBook or desktop uh, PC or something like that? Um, not as my main computer. Mm. I've thought about getting like a Mac Mini or something like that for like a file server and to like do some background automations and stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of really cool utilities on the Mac that will do background automations and stuff. Um, but 
I love the iPad. Like I've used a lot of different computers. Uh, I actually just filmed a video today talking about this just a little bit that I feel I've used a lot of computers. I started off using windows 95 when I was a kid, I've built PCs, I've used Macs. Um, but the iPad's my favorite computer. It's hands down like the computer that I enjoy using. Uh, so I've never really been tempted to go buy a MacBook. Um, we're, we're recording this, uh, the, you know, a few days after or, or almost a week after Apple just announced their new Mac, uh, yeah. MacBook Airs, MacBook Pros yeah. and Mac Minis with the M1 chip, which is basically the guts and core <laughs> of an iPad. Yeah, like I was so underwhelmed by this announcement, but okay. Yes, we have yeah. new chips. Great, but it's the same thing again. <laughs> but but I mean, like I so I'm a nerd. I'm a chip nerd. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm like I'm a hardware hype, nerd. Yeah, but... I totally get it. Uh, I I think for video editors and stuff like that, it'll be great. But to me, the iPad's my favorite computer. There's stuff I want from it, and there's room that I can see it growing. Um, a, a traditional computer like a PC or a Mac, we know what they are. They, yeah. They've been figured out for a while now. Uh, there's nothing really new and exciting there. It's just that they are what they are. But the iPad, I feel like, still has room to grow. It's kind of still figuring itself out. Um, and that's exciting to me. That's what, that's what draws me to the iPad. Yeah, and tell you what, I 100% believe you. You know, it, it is... You live and breathe this iPad Pro, and I think I would miss my gaming PC, and um, I think I would struggle recording this right now, for example, oh, so yeah. uh, things like that. But once you set up, and that's what I teach to my Inner Circle members as well, um, you have to think about what you need your devices for your tools for and so on and then you think about what devices and tools you use obviously you start with something with something and then you figure out okay it's not for you maybe you adjust and so on but so many people come to me and they say okay what what tool should i use what um, task manager should i use yeah. to do is or things three <laughs> yeah you get this too and then yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. should i answer my answer is always okay what do you need it for do you need it to use it on Windows as well? You know, do you need, yeah. in many cases, <laughs> a simple piece of paper, and I'm, you know, founder of the paperless movement, but simple piece of paper does the job as well. It really depends on complexity of your tasks yeah. and all these things. And that's what I teach in the inner circle, where we actually think about the general workflow and then we optimize the productivity system around this. And also in teams and so on, so many especially in big companies, that's really an issue. They get, you know, a salesperson selling them a new productivity tool and everybody has to use it, but it makes completely yep. no sense at all. But you have, you are forced to use it and this is just not efficient. So you're nodding heavenly so you can absolutely <laughs> well, agree. Yeah, I mean, I, like I mentioned yeah. at the beginning, uh, my, my day job, I'm the network admin oh, yeah, for insurance yeah. company. I get all sorts of people coming in and being like, hey, we need to use this tool to push it. And I'll be like, why do you want to use this tool? What what will this tool do for you that this other tool that we already have, already <laughs> implemented, our whole workflow is used through, our whole staff is used to using, What? why, would, why do we want to add this extra complexity. So for me, I mean, I, I figured out my workflow on the iPad. My workflow on the iPad is stable. I know what it is, but I still try out other apps so I can talk about other apps. Yeah. And that's one thing I, I think a lot of people, um, and maybe I need to do a better job of saying this up front, it, that misunderstand for me. So I'll, I'll do videos talking about different apps and people think I'm switching my entire workflow over to these apps, but no, they, they're just different. They may click for somebody, like things clicks for me, things three really Really clicks for me drafts clicks for me shortcuts clicks for me but they may not click for everyone else so that's why i kind of want i i i see my job as basically hey here's a bunch of these tools now you figure out with the knowledge and the information that i've given you you figure out which tool works for you based on your circumstance because you know i don't know if you have to use a windows computer at work or i don't know if you want to use a mac and an ipad and, and i and my, my channel is not to basically say everyone needs to be iPad only. Everyone needs to throw their PCs in the garbage and kick their Mac to the curb. That's not it. If you want to use an iPad, great. That's awesome. Here's some tools. Here's some information on how to get started with that. And here's how to, you know, kick it up to the next level if you're interested in that. But 
use the tools that work for you. Don't try and force something to work for you if it's not working. Like you can't put a square in a circle hole. Like it just doesn't work that way. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's the same for me when I when I make reviews about certain tools, I get the same thing. So, or for example, about the crayon uh, stylus instead of the Apple pencil, everybody thought I'm <laughs> sitting there with my crayon. <laughs> and drawing on my iPad, but I'm I'm loving the Apple Pencil, so there's no point about this. So, and when I point out some flaws in the Apple Pencil and what could be improved, then I certainly, um, you know, you don't like the Apple Pencil anymore, and what should I use instead, and things like that. But what is even worse are people really commenting in the comments below and say, this is so much better. You know, I'm using Apple Notes because it is so much better than NoteShelf or whatever I'm I'm reviewing there yeah for you it might be really the case but you know let's exactly. try to import a pdf and annotate it so end yeah. of story you know <laughs> so mm -hmm. usually it ends there we really have to yeah maybe you, you pointed out make a better job to to discuss this more but it could become repetitive then again <laughs> if you mention it in every uh, yeah video. And, and that's one of those things I always worry about. You know, every YouTuber, all, we all do the same thing. And, and you could probably repeat it with me, but links to everything will be in the description below. We, we say that <laughs> in every single video. And it feels repetitive, but the few times that I don't say that, yeah. I get comments saying, hey, where's the link to this? <laughs> well, it's in the description. So, so I always like, I'm like, so I just say it anyways, because I like, I, I try and head that off. But I, but to your point, yeah, it's like, I don't want to have to say like, Hey, you know, maybe this app isn't for you, but like, also like it, it's, it has to be, I just want to be the person presenting the information. Here's the information and I'll let you decide what you need to do with it because I'm not the keeper of your life. I can't decide for you if things is going to be the best task manager for you. Hey, maybe, maybe reminders, the built-in app is yeah. perfect for you. That's great. It's not, it's not for me. Uh, personally, there's a lot of choices Apple made when it came to reminders that I don't really care for. Same thing with Apple notes. Like mm. there's a lot of choices in notes that I don't really care for. Um, but mostly the fact that it doesn't have plain text support or markdown support, mm. but uh, yeah, no, that's, but it may be perfect for somebody else and that's totally okay. So let's talk about Markdown. You just mentioned it. Uh, I also love this really. Maybe you can just explain to people who are not really familiar with Markdown what this means. And then um, let's talk about why this is so much more efficient. I think we agree on this. So, yeah, <laughs> Markdown is plain text. So plain text basically means there's no rich text in it. There's nothing special about the text. You, you're not changing the color. You're not adding italics you're not bolding anything but what markdown does since it does since it's plain text and it doesn't have any of that stuff you can use symbols to make things represent being bold and italicized and urls and headings and stuff like that so if you hit the pound symbol or uh ampersand or whatever it's called uh and then space and then type out a title or, or type out something it'll be represented as a title you can use um asterisk asterisk type something and then asterisk asterisk again and it'll be it'll be represented as bolded when it's rendered out mm. and and markdown is a lightweight efficient way of writing out these kind of important things you can do things like embed urls with it um there's a whole bunch to it and i'm probably not the best person to explain it um but, it, yeah, but it's, it's a great strange, way you know, of writing yeah it is strange because when you on paper again when you think about it yeah, reaching out and marking the text and making it bold seems to be the same speed as adding two asterisks, uh, four in total, actually. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. And, and so, I would say, but it, it goes so much faster. However, again, I'm on a German keyboard. It's really just annoying, especially oh. with the Rome research. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you used Rome research already or t tested it, but there's a lot common when it comes to Markdown and a lot of shortcuts and so on. But it is just a mess on the German keyboard. Uh, I don't find my, um, what is it, the corner brackets? How do you call this? The, not the. <laughs> not the, the square curved. brackets oh yes yeah, square brackets how stupid tom saw it there <laughs> yeah square bra That's brackets okay. it's not on my keyboard i mean i have really always i have to find it it's um it's five and six on my end here 
but it's not marked oh. on the MX, so yeah. Oh wow, so, I can see that being really annoying. Yeah, and you have I, the I'm square brackets directly on the keyboard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, as, they're as they're numbers. basically right below the plus and minus buttons. Yeah, so exactly. They're, they're that they're that and second I have to row use, off on the right. Like I, it's super easy for me to get to the brackets. And I have to use the option, and, hold the option key, and use five and six then. So it's uh, yeah. oh geez, yeah. That's and not and for people that don't know, brackets are important when it comes to um, embedding URLs yeah. with Markdown. So you need brackets, and then you need um, now I'm blanking on it. The the half circle symbols why am i blanking on that one now <laughs> uh, thank you very much for you know <laughs> no, we but even. yeah i'm blanking on what those are called now <laughs> uh, but yeah like the the half circle things whatever yeah, they so, are <laughs> the, half circle. Um, the normal brackets yeah. i don't know yeah okay the the I'm circular sure. brackets no the normal uh, but things. yeah you need those in order to bed, bed urls via markdown and stuff and, and there's a lot of markdown like just google search like markdown cheat sheet or something and you'll yeah. understand like why people use it it's it's incredibly important it's lightweight it's easy to type uh, i'm a fast typer and i can just quickly quickly type something out and i'm not having to reach up and hit the bold button or the italic button or or like copy and well you do you can paste the url the url thing's a little confusing but it's really nice once you once you understand what it's used for um and and i do that through drafts like i write pretty much all my markdown through drafts um craft also supports it as well so that that's yeah. really nice so but you know on the ipad i think bear is also a very good tool isn't it when it comes especially to markdown yes. and what i really like and something i think is not leveraged enough in, in uh, nowadays uh, is inline tags so tagging yeah. on your notes in line so i think yeah any thoughts on this tagging organizing um, bear notes finding notes and so on how do you do approach For, uh, this um search i use search <laughs> okay. on the ipad That's a lot thing, so yeah. I, I pretty much keep my ipad in the the magic keyboard case so uh, i just hit command space brings up search and I'll just type whatever I'm looking for. Um, both drafts and craft do a really great job of indexing their notes. So basically, if I can search for anything, I can search for like medical information or a script or something like that. And the built-in iPad search will just bring it up. I can tap on it. It'll launch it right into that app, bring up that note. And I really think the system-wide search is something that's really underutilized for a yeah. lot of iPad users and maybe even Mac users. Mac users have Spotlight. Um, and there's also great utilities like Alfred and, and uh, Launch Bar. Yeah. Uh, but but search, is, search is great on the iPad. I really think it's underutilized. So um, I don't usually typically do search within apps. Like a lot of apps like Drafts do have search built into the app. But I don't really use that a lot. I use the system-wide search. Yeah, if it... Totally. If you just can open up the note directly on the point where it is, why first open the app and then go to the search field and then search for it? Absolutely agree. Yep. And funny enough, on the iPhone, <laughs> I always keep ending uh, up um, bringing up the search Never look at the iPhone when I'm talking, you know. I just <laughs> wanted to talk about the iPhone, picking it up, look at it, and you know this, when you just want to look how late it is or something like this, and then you see a notification, then you go in, and then already you're in the spiral <laughs> downwards. <laughs> you're okay, so, oh, there's something yep. on social media, and then you end up closing the iPhone and realizing, okay, what was the time? What was it what I wanted to look up? <laughs> it's unbelievable <laughs> how easy humans yep. are. So, <laughs> yeah, just wanted to mention, using the search field to find the app that I want to open. So Siri oh, yeah. Yeah, really improved feature. there as well because they really, usually she knows what I want to do. Uh, yep. that she's, she's doing a gr great job in this case. So I can also agree with this. And um, that's what I say that we have to change the way we think about technology and digital world and so on. We are so many people are stuck in this folder structure thing. Um, <clears throat> I think I, I wanted to do a video on this as well, the comparison between folders and tags and all this. Google G Drive, when they released, it was just a search field. So there was not proper, no proper structure when they started. And they, they thought they have the mightiest search engine in the world. Why not, you know, just find your stuff when you're looking for it? People were complaining so much about these folder structures that they uh, improved it on this end. And I don't understand it. I, I really don't understand. Or maybe it's our job to to spread the word how we can improve efficiency 
using those things. And certainly search yeah. is something that is really important there. Yeah, I, I and not that I don't use folders at all. If it's something that I'm keeping long term, like in craft or yeah. in the files app or something like that, I will put it under a loose folder. Um, but I'm not one of those people that has detailed folders that has like 50 subfolders that you could just keep going and going and going yeah. deep. No, I just have like a documents folder and then it'll be like personal, day job, YouTube. Like it's kind of loose there. And then I just use search to pull anything up that I need. Uh, basically, the folders are there. So if I can't think of like the keyword to search for something, I can kind of go in there and I can have a general area in, in order to look for something. Yeah. And there are so many more advantages when it comes to this. Uh, you know, I'm talking about handwriting note taking apps and people are, keep asking me. How can I manage my to dos? You know, if they just want to use their journal or whatever to manage everything, it's certainly possible. Just think a bit out of the box. Um, just, ma you know, make a code in front of a to do, like uh, hashtag 27 or something like that. And then you can or, search through this by OCR. Or, or, or you can use Apple Notes. Um, Apple Notes will OCR handwritten notes, and then you can search using the system-wide search for what is in there. Now, if you have terrible handwriting like me, good luck with that. <laughs> But if you have decent handwriting, it works really well. So you can handwrite out your to-do list for the day in Apple Notes. Draw it all out. I say Apple Notes because it's just notes in the, the system, but Apple Notes really, yeah. people understand yeah. it from there. Um, but yeah, no, you could draw or write out your to-do list right there and it'll OCR it in the system and you can still use the system-wide keyboard, like command space and search for your task right there. That That's exactly what I'm I'm referring to. You mean it finds the tasks, open uh, the checkboxes or what do you mean? Yeah, so, so like if you were to write, like uh, if you were to draw a box and then put like take out, trash mm -hmm. and you search take out trash and take yeah, yeah. Out so you have to search, search for this task uh, yeah so you would have to search but for that's task, what I, but if you put at the top like if you put the date at the top or something then there you go like you were okay. kind of saying like if you put like 27 or whatever that's exactly so top, when you use a code that just refers that uh, to do to do then i always can mm -hmm. just search for this code and it pulls up all the the to do still open in my book so yeah it's not I absolutely agree. So Apple Notes, you can do this, and now in all the other no, uh, handwriting note-taking apps as well because they implemented OCR. And there we come yeah. again to the thing, how much the iPad improved over time. So this is really, you mentioned it before, it is exciting times, and I'm always amazed. Now we have the scribble feature. Uh, I know mm -hmm. you're not using the Apple Pencil a lot, but for me, this was a really exciting thing to do. I'm using Miro to mind map my things, and the annoying thing is always using Apple Pencil, drawing out my mind map, put it away, then write keyboard. That's just a break, let, let, like the markdown thing, yeah? So we keep the hands on the keyboard and do everything with shortcuts. And that's the same when you're using an Apple Pencil and want to draw and write everything. You prefer a workflow that always uses one device at a time. So yeah, the scribble feature and things like this, I think there's so much more to come with the iPad. And looking at Big Sur that, that I just installed on my Mac, um, People already um, thought about this. It looks very like for touch screens and things like that. Any thoughts on this? That um, it merges in, in some Macs point in the in, future? Uh, yeah, I, I haven't used a Mac in years, but I have seen Big Sur and I have used it. We, we do have a Mac at my day job. Uh, and, and we put it, we installed it on that there. And, and I played around with it for about a half hour. Yeah. It definitely seems very touch friendly, especially like the changes to Finder and stuff like that. I uh, I know there was a, the other day Craig Federighi over at Apple. He said something about like they didn't they he was he was surprised that people thought they designed Big Sur in mind for touch. But looking and I think that's that that's a lot of times Apple will say something like oh no one ever <laughs> will need an iPad Mini and then like a year later here's an iPad Mini yeah. oh no one will ever want to watch videos on their iPod here's an iPod video so I could very well you know, see I this think they, being there being a touchback in they a year say or two. that and then they count the numbers of complaints wow well, we need this and so on and then they see if it is worth uh, creating it or not but you know it, I think it is not it is um 
with the iPad using a sidecar with your MacBook, it just makes sense. I mean, you have an extension of your MacBook already on your iPad with touch uh, functionality there. So it makes sense to me that they also build it up this way. So I think, Chris, we have to make a follow-up interview. I think that's really interesting. I love these nerdy talks there where, you know, yeah. we... we we know what we are talking about and things like that. So really appreciate uh, your time that you put into this interview. And Absolutely. if people want to follow up with you and see your YouTube channel, now is the time to share all you have to give. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you want to check out my YouTube channel, you can go to YouTube uh, and search Christopher Lolly L-A-W-L-E-Y. Uh, I am the iPad guy, not the folk singer. There's two Christopher <laughs> Lollies on YouTube. There's a folk singer. I am not him. You don't want to hear my folk singing. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no, I'm the, I'm the iPad guy there. Check it out. If you're curious about uh, Twitter or Instagram or anything, you can go to the untitled site.com and all my links to all the other social media stuff are on there as well. That's awesome, Chris. Thank you very much for being on the show, and I follow up with you next time. Awesome. Thank you for having me. All right. I think this was a really interesting talk there. I love how Chris really lives and breathes using the iPad. He optimized his workflow, and that's something I really recommend to you as well. Think about your workflow, think about what you really need your devices for, your tools for, and then try to optimize them the way you like it. Don't listen to all the people recommending things to you because usually they tell you what tools they use for their own workflows. So if you're interested to learn more about how you find the best tools, I recommend to you to join my inner circle. I'm here for you to help you with this, setting up your productivity system. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll catch you up next time.